Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, this one's gonna be pretty low key and kind of stripped back. I don't have a script or any real plan or any idea of what I'm really doing, but it's gonna be fun because we're gonna upgrade my TrueNAS server, which is turned off and sitting back there. Yeah, we're gonna be upgrading the drives because when I did the Synology video I did a little while back, they were nice enough to send over four of these Toshiba 10 terabyte um, NAS SSD, or four of these 10 terabyte Toshiba NAS hard drives. And so I'm going to be swapping out the four, four terabyte Seagates that are in that NAS currently and replacing them with these. And I'll talk a little bit more about how I'm going to do that or what my plan is there in just a little bit. And the reason I'm doing this isn't because I'm running out of space. I actually have a lot of space right now, but I'd like to future proof a little bit more, I guess, and give myself some more space since I have these drives. And I actually have a plan for the four Seagates that are in the NAS currently. So I, I kind of need them for some upcoming stuff. So this video is gonna take place in a few parts. We're gonna make a few upgrades. Uh, first, I'm going to take that NAS that's sitting over there and take it outside and dust it out a little bit because it's gotten a little dusty just running for the past few months. Um, and then I'm going to replace the boot drive because currently it's just using a USB like flash drive for the boot drive, which probably isn't that big of a deal. But while I'm doing this, I might as well go ahead and replace it with an SSD because I meant to do that the last time I did some updates, upgrades on this NAS, uh, and I just was lazy and didn't get around to it. So I'm gonna do that, which means I'm going to have to save a config of my true NAS server and then do a fresh install onto an SSD and then reload that config back on there. So once I upgrade the boot drive and that's all tested and working, then I'm going to use a few little things. Ooh, I forgot to grab one, hold on. So to upgrade the drives, well, first of all, instead of just, well, one way I could do this is if I wanted to keep the same pool or VDEV structure in my pool with those four drives and just have them be in RAID Z1, which is what they are right now, I'm pretty sure, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure you can actually just replace the, one, the drives one by one, the, the same way that you would if one of the drives failed. But I'm not gonna do that because I, I don't need four 10 terabyte drives in RAID Z1. I'd rather actually have two VDEVs that are both in mirror, or two mirrored VDEVs um, that are striped across the pool. So I'll end up having only 20 terabytes basically of usable space, but I'll have a bit more redundancy. So for, for my sake, I think that's that's better. And so just resilvering the drives one by one doesn't really solve that. So instead, I'm going to try to migrate the pool that's on those four drives onto a new pool and then basically replace those pools back. I don't entirely know what I'm doing. It's gonna be a little bit of winging it and hoping that I don't screw things up and lose all my data, but I have multiple backups and uh, I think it'll go fine. To do that though, first of all, I have four of these 10 terabyte Toshiba drives that I'm gonna be using. And to attach those to my motherboard, which only has six SATA ports, which four of them are currently going to be used and another one will be used for our SATA boot drive. Uh, to attach our new drives, I'm going to be using this um, PCIe HBA and one of these SAS to four SATA breakout cables. So I'm gonna be using those to kind of make that happen, connect them to our motherboard, but to actually fit them in our case, because we only have two more drive slots available. So to actually fit them in our case, I'm gonna be using this cool guy from Icy Dock, which is a two five and a quarter inch bay to three, three and a half inch bay um, adapter dock thing. So it's got, three drive bays. I really wish I could have gotten one of the four drive bay ones that take up three optical drives because they're four or five, three and a half inch to three, five and a quarter inch bays. I wish I had one of those, uh, but this is what I got. So we're going to be able to put three of our drives in this. So it just has two SATA power ports on the back and three SATA ports. So we'll be able to put three drives in there and then I'll use one of the two empty slots for the fourth hard drive. We'll migrate everything over and then I'll take the old hard drives out. And yeah, so this should be fun. So the first step though is going to be cleaning this up and then I'll save my config off of my boot drive that's currently that flash drive, install the SSD, and then do a fresh install and import that config from my backup. So let's go ahead and do that. And then after that, we'll go ahead and 
do the whole drive swap and everything. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so we are all cleaned up and back here in TrueNAS. And I actually already did all of this before I took the machine apart, just because, you know, I wanted to be safe. But I'm going to go back through everything just to kind of show you what all is going on. So, first of all, under data protection, before I did anything, I made sure and ran both of my cloud sync tasks. Oh, cloud sync tasks. One of them is to Google Drive in the cloud, and then one of them is actually. Uh, don't ask why it's in the cloud sync tasks and not like R sync or something like that. Um, long story short, I just use SFTP for my local ASA store backup. So I backed up at least my main data set uh, before doing anything. And then I also backed up the, if we go to system advanced, wait, no, excuse me, general manage configuration. Uh, this is our backup for our boot drive for our TrueNAS config. So I downloaded this, I went ahead and exported this password secret seed, and I saved it to my desktop. Um, just to be safe, I'll do it again. So we have that backup, which is what we need. And everything now should be good, I believe. Oh, I need, probably need to get, um, I already did this, but I went to TrueNAS, TrueNAS download, and then under get TrueNAS, TrueNAS scale, uh, I'm already signed up. So this download stable 22.12 is the version that I already have on my TrueNAS server. You can see if I go here to somewhere, dashboard maybe. Why is this so hard to find? Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, I am blind. Yeah, TrueNAS 22.12. So I went ahead and downloaded this and actually copied it over to my Ventoy flash drive. Yes, I do use Ventoy for all the people in the comments that like to always point it out anytime I do anything differently. So um, so I have my TrueNAS scale ISO there. And yeah, I'm off camera going to just plug in an SSD uh, really quickly so we can just get it booted up. And then when I do all the drives and everything, then I'll go ahead and put it in a nice tidy spot. But for now, I'm just gonna kind of chuck it in there and I'll come right back. Okay, sorry if it's a bit noisy. This NAS is right next to my mic and the fans are at 100% again because we don't have our config, but it's booted back up. Off camera, I plugged in the SSD just really quickly and then did like a basic install of TrueNAS, N nothing I haven't done on this channel before. I just didn't feel like setting up the capture card and everything with a bunch of adapters and it was gonna be a whole big mess. So I just did it really quick and now we're back. Um, yeah, but here's our thing. We don't have any pools because it's a fresh install. But what we can do, I believe, is go to Advanced, and oh, General, Manage Configuration, Upload File. Okay, this is my first time doing all this, by the way. I, I should be very clear now. I'm kind of winging this based off some, some videos I've watched, some docs I've read, but I'm kind of just winging this. I don't have any assistance from anyone who's ever done it before, so hopefully I don't screw things up, but don't, don't follow this along like it's a tutorial. I should have said that earlier probably, but yeah. So, okay, all passwords are reset when they uploaded. Configuration database files file was saved. Uh, okay, I think I saved it with the password secret, so I think we should be good. All right, so I selected my file I saved earlier. We're gonna hit upload. And let's see if this applies our configuration properly. I do have my flash drive handy just in case, or the flash drive that had the, it was original boot drive on here. And let's see, let's see what happens here. My thought process on this is as long as I have a backup of my data, and as long as I keep my original boot drive and I don't really mess with the original pool, I always have the option of plugging my original boot drive back in, my original pool back in, um, plus I have uh, all of my data backed up, you know, not, not as ZFS, but I have it backed up just as files to two different locations. So hopefully I should be safe. <laughs> hopefully I don't lose all the footage from this channel or anything like that. But it looks like over on my, you can't see it, but over on my right, TrueNAS is rebooting, which makes sense. Okay, it looks like TrueNAS just rebooted, at least on my monitor I can see it. Looky there, now I can actually sign in as my Haven user. My fans just spun down, which means that my, my, uh, okay, yeah, there we go. So that means this init command I have for IPMI tool to spin the fans down that round. So this looks like everything is back up to normal. Yeah, okay, great. We have my 
pool here, HDD or hard drive haven. I have my two data sets, or my data set, and then my uh, SMB share, and then I have this volume here for a single virtual machine I have running on here. And this all looks correct. I have my SMB share. I think we're in good shape. So now I think I'm going to turn this back off and do all of the swapping of disks and get everything set up so that we have all eight drives, the four four terabyte drives that are currently in here making up hard drive, the hard drive haven pool, and then the four new drives that we'll use to make the new pool. And then after I do all of the hardware side of things, I'll hop back in here and we'll migrate everything over. Okay, so everything seemed to post properly, even though I moved things over to the HBA, I still have my four disks in my hard drive haven, and then I have these four unassigned disks. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm gonna to go to disks here, and I'm going to find my 10 terabyte drives. So this guy, oh, that UI thing threw me off. Uh, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So we're not gonna to touch our boot drive here. And we're not going to touch, touch anything with hard drive haven, so just making sure. Yep. And we're going to... Oh, can I not... Okay, I can't edit... I can't wipe multiple disks at a time. But I should be able to go here to this first 10 terabyte drive. Hit wipe. And we'll just do a quick wipe. Okay. Okay, so what happened here was because I never wiped these drives and they had a RAID configuration on them, TrueNAS wasn't going to wipe them or let me create a pool with them. So I used the command line tool dd to write zeros to the first portion of the drive to make the metadata for the RAID configuration corrupt so that TrueNAS wouldn't tell that they were part of a RAID. And then once I did that, then I could wipe the drives and create a pool with two mirrored VDEVs for our hard drive haven 2 pool. With the new pool created, I went to the advanced tab so that I can move the system data set over to our new pool so that we could start messing with the old pool. Okay, and now back to previous me to do the replication portion. So I'm gonna go into this replication task wizard and advanced, I'm pretty sure. And uh, we're gonna do push and we're gonna change this to local. Also, I'm talking like I know what I'm doing. I do not know what I'm doing here. I am guessing. <laughs> Probably isn't smart to do, but okay. Um, I have done some research, but I'm probably still bound to screw something up. So for source, we're actually not going to select hard drive haven. We're going to select these two these two children here, our two data or data set and a volume here underneath it, because otherwise I'm pretty sure if we tried to transfer this hard drive haven to hard drive haven two, it would actually be one like layer down. So hard drive haven would get transferred into hard drive haven two, which isn't what we want. So for destination, we're just gonna select hard drive haven two. And I think this should, uh, nope, it didn't generate a name. So it doesn't really matter. We're gonna only use this once. So call it HH migration. Cool. Okay, um, I think we want to do this full file system replication. Um, completely replicate the child data set. Target data set will have all of the source data sets properties, child data sets clones, and snapshots. That sounds like what I want. Uh, I don't think any of these override parameters or exclude parameters. We're not gonna replicate any specific snapshots. Um, snapshot retention policy. Same as source, use the snapshot lifetime from the source. We're just gonna do everything from source, I believe. Replication from scratch. If the destination system has snapshots, but they do not have any data in common with the source snapshots, destroy all destination snapshots and do a full replication. I don't think we even need this because there shouldn't be any snapshots on this pool, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, destination data set read only policy. There's a typo. Set will changes 
set will change all destination data sets to read only. We don't want that. We're going to say ignore. I'm pretty sure here. Disable the read only property. Yeah, because this shouldn't be a read only data set or pool data set. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good here. We're, we're, this is being pushed, so it shouldn't mess with our current data set at all. Um, we're not going to run automatically. Also include naming schema. No, okay, we're. Okay, I think we should be good. We're gonna hit save. You must at least either bind a periodic snapshot task or provide also include naming schema or naming regex for push replication task. Okay, snapshot schedule for this replication task. Choose from previously, okay, I don't think that matters because we're only gonna run this once. Okay, replication tasks. Let's hit run now. Okay, and we're back to post-production Colton because I ran into this replication.run error because there were three snapshots that all had the year as 2024 for some reason, so maybe an issue with an NTP server. I'm not sure, but I ended up just deleting those snapshots and rerunning the migration task, but that didn't work and instead started migrating more data over, so I ended up with more data on the new pool than on the old one. So I just decided to cancel the replication task, delete the data sets off of the hard drive Haven 2 pool, and then redo the migration task from scratch. And the second time it worked just fine. To make it so that I didn't have to set up all of my shares and everything on a new pool, I went through the kind of clunky process of exporting the hard drive Haven pool in the GUI, and then using the zpool command line tool to import that, but change the name to hard drive Haven old, and then re-export it, and then re-import it in the GUI. I then transferred the system data set over from Hard Drive Haven 2 to Hard Drive Haven Old, and did the same command line process to essentially rename Hard Drive Haven 2 to Hard Drive Haven. And then once that was imported back into the TrueNAS GUI, I copied the system data set back over to the Hard Drive Haven pool, which is our new Hard Drive Haven pool. But because it's called Hard Drive Haven, all of my services, virtual machines, everything like that, all just basically worked just fine again. So after some testing and making sure everything was good, I went ahead and exported the Hard Drive Haven old pool and was left with just my new pool that worked great. Okay, so it's day two now of working on this and I'm on solo dad duty today, which is why I'm just doing this on my phone really quick, but I just wanted to follow up. And after letting it run overnight and uh, well, I re rebuilt the server so it didn't have all eight drives in there and tidied it up a little bit, got rid of the HBA. And yeah, after changing over the pool or renaming the pool and then importing it back, everything kind of spun up like normal. Um, even the virtual machine just kind of spun up like normal. All of my network share, or my um, SMB share was all set up and running and it seems like it's performing about the same. Um, yeah, no issues. So I probably did it the hard way long, not correct way, but it worked. So if there was a better way of doing that, uh, let me know in the comments. Like it seems like TrueNAS should have a more simple way just to move a pool from one set of drives to another. Like it, I don't think it should be that complicated because it seems like something that might be useful. Um, but yeah, so it's up and running. I'm gonna move it obviously, but I've just been leaving it on this bench for a bit. I'm going to keep the four Seagate drives for another day or two, just in the, the boxes that the uh, Toshibas came out of in case anything goes wrong. But I think, yeah, it's all up and running. It seems to be doing great. And uh, oh, a little sneak peek at some stuff coming up. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, I think that's about it for this one. So thanks for watching. Stay curious. And I really hope to see you in the next one.